Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today on the show, what we're going to do is talk about gas evolution reactions. These are just reactions that produce gas from what wasn't gas before. The most classic example of this, which you probably did as a kid, is when you combine baking soda and vinegar, usually in a volcano. So you dye the vinegar red, you mix it with baking soda, and it comes rushing out the top of the volcano, and liquid and bubbles go everywhere. Ah, it's lava. Well, all those little bubbles, that's gas. It's a gas evolution reaction. It's producing gas from things that aren't gas. And we see uh, that example laid out more clearly here below. We have a water bottle full of vinegar and baking soda. And what we do is we let that react. And after the reaction, we can see the balloon blows up because gas is produced. What we're gonna do in this video is we're going to look at what causes a reaction to be a gas evolution reaction. By the end of the video, you'll be able to look at two reactants that are combining and decide will that produce a gas or will that not. This will only be for a limited set of reactants because of course there's really tons and tons of gas evolution reactions, but we're gonna cover the ones that are most important and most common. Let's start then by looking closer at baking soda and vinegar. Okay, so what we see here is the combination of vinegar, which turns out to be acetic acid, with baking soda, which turns out to be sodium bicarbonate. And the very first step that we need to do here is switch the cations, what's known as a double displacement reaction, because we're displacing the cations. That'll look similar to your first step for precipitation reactions or for acid-base reactions. To identify the cations, you need to know your polyatomic ions. So you need to be able to recognize this is acetate and this is uh, hydrogen carbonate, or else it's hard to know what to switch. Once you can identify those, you can see that, oh, the cations, the positively charged things, are the sodium and the uh, hydrogen. And we're just going to switch those. That's the very first step. So when we switch those, what we get out is sodium acetate, and that's aqueous. And then we're also going to get out H2CO3, and that would be aqueous. No gas yet, notice. What we need to do next is balance the product's charge. Make sure that our charges are neutral on both of our resulting compounds. Again, looks very similar to an acid-base reaction where we've predicted the general products, but now we need to know, are those neutral in terms of their charge? Do the cations and anions balance out? Well, here we can see that sodium is plus one. And if you remember your polyatomic ions, you'll know that acetate's minus one. And so that means, yeah, that's balanced. Similarly, we have plus one for our hydrogen two times. That's plus two. And our carbonate is two minus. So in this case, our charges are already balanced. So that's good. So our compounds are neutral. In a minute, we'll do an example where that's not the case. All right, so what's step three? Step three says, identify any unstable products. And here's where gas reactions are a little different from reactions you've looked at before. Uh, H2CO3, carbonic acid, is not stable. So it's produced, but it only hangs out for a little while, and then it changes really rapidly. So it's just this intermediate state. It's not what it's ultimately gonna be. And what it's ultimately gonna be is told to you by this table here. And that is that H2CO3 splits apart into water and carbon dioxide. So we know this is gonna split eventually into H2O, liquid, plus CO2, gas. So this is your first exposure, or possibly your first exposure to an intermediate in a chemical reaction. And it's not uncommon. You produce something that's not very stable, it'll be around for fractions of a second, for a few minutes, and then it'll break apart. In this case, it's quite rapid. As you notice, when you mix acetic acid and vinegar together, I'm sorry, acetic acid and sodium bicarbonate together, it really quickly produces gas. So that guy's only around for a few moments, fractions of a second. So what's, uh, what's the end of step three? It says write our final products. So basically what we need to do is go ahead and replace H2CO3, which is going to break down into our water and carbon dioxide. So our final reaction then is going to be our vinegar, which is aqueous, plus our sodium bicarbonate, which is also aqueous. In this case, our sodium bicarbonate has been dissolved in water. You could also add it as a solid. And we're going to still get out our sodium acetate. But now, instead of our sodium or our carbonic acid, we're going to get out water and CO2. Okay. 
Okay. Now we need to balance our chemical reaction. Turns out this guy's already balanced. But if you want more help balancing, check out my balancing chemical reactions video, which I'll link to below. Notice this has produced a gas, our CO2. It's a gas evolution reaction. Over here we have aqueous and aqueous. Over there we have aqueous liquid and gas. So we made a gas from things that weren't gas. It's a gas evolution reaction. That's what made your volcano erupt. Gas expands a ton, and that's why you see all of those bubbles coming out and the volume expands, because gas takes up more space than liquid or solid. Let's look at other examples of gas evolution reactions. Here I'm going to show you a table of all the unstable products that we might see and what they'll ultimately break down into. So, this table basically has to be memorized, and that's unfortunate, uh, but luckily there's only four different unstable products. We have H2CO3, which we already talked about, H2SO3, which uh, it looks very similar. H2SO3 breaks down to sulfur dioxide and water. And finally, we have ammonium hydroxide, NH4OH, and that will break down into ammonia, which is our gas, and H2O liquid. I've skipped the top one. The top one is not an unstable product. It just is a gas right away. So H2S, if you ever see that formed when you do your double displacement reaction, you just already have a gas and you don't have to think about uh, that secondary step of something breaking down. Okay, so let's use this bigger table now to do an example problem. Here we have ammonium iodide combining with sodium hydroxide. First step, switch the cations. Ammonium is a cation, and H4 is positive. So that means when we switch the cation, we're going to get sodium iodide, which is aqueous, plus NH4OH, also aqueous. Now, let's see, did we find any unstable products? Well, sodium iodide is not on our list, but NH4OH, that is on our list right here. And what it breaks down into is NH3 and H2O. So we're going to write our reaction again. I'm going to skip the products just for the sake of time. And we'll just write down, I'm sorry, I'm going to skip the reactants just for the sake of time. And we'll just write down the products we get. We'd still get sodium iodide. And that is aqueous and the charges are balanced. And NH4OH is going to break down into NH3, which is a gas, plus H2O, which is a liquid. And this reaction is also balanced. The charges are balanced. So really, we switched the cations and we identified the unstable products. Balancing of the product's charge, it was good. Ammonium was plus one, hydroxide was minus one, sodium was plus one, iodide was minus one. And the chemical reaction is also already balanced. And that's not totally uncommon with these reactions. Let's do one more example where you actually need to pay more attention to these two steps. Okay, hydrogen bromide or hydrobromic acid, combining with sodium sulfide. What happens there? Well, what we get is we switch the cations once again, sodium and hydrogen, and we're going to get out um, NABR, and that is aqueous, plus HS. And we'll wait on assigning that phase for reasons that you might already see as obvious. Okay, so that's step one. We switch the cation. Step two, balance the charge. So sodium is plus one. Bromine's minus one. Those are balanced. Hydrogen's plus two, or plus one, I'm sorry, and sulfur is minus two. If you're not sure where I'm getting these charges from, check out my video predicting the charges from the periodic table, and that'll show you how I know what these charges are. I'll link to that below. So HS isn't balanced, it's plus one and two minus. So we gotta cross over to balance those. It'll give us two hydrogens, H2S. Well, now let's go to step three, identify any unstable products. Well, we don't have any unstable products, but we do have H2S, which is a gas. It's straight to a gas. There's no second step here. So that already is a gas evolution reaction. It's not balanced though. And so step four says balance our chemical reaction. Well, what we need to do is we need to make sure that there's two hydrogens on the left side. So that makes it two hydrogens on the left side. And that's going to now give us two bromines. So we need to make sure there's two bromines over here. Notice that we have two sodiums on both sides and one sulfur on both sides. So that's our final chemical reaction. Again, I don't go very slowly with balancing chemical reactions here because I don't want to take up a bunch of people's time who may already know how to balance a chemical reaction. But if you're unsure, check out my video on balancing chemical reactions. 
Okay. So thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry on predicting the products of gas evolution reactions. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them below. Hopefully now you can predict when a reaction is going to produce a gas, that is, evolve a gas. Thanks for watching.